Summary of Passing by Nella Larson At the beginning of Nella Larson's passing, the main character, Irene, reads the second letter she has ever gotten from Claire, a friend from childhood. In it, Claire asks Irene if they can get together. Although it's not yet clear why, the letter makes Irene angry. The story then jumps ahead to two years ago, when Irene is shopping in the sweltering heat for souvenirs for her boys. Irene, who lives in Harlem, is in Chicago to see her father. Irene grew up in Chicago. A nice driver helps Irene get into his car and offers to take her to the Drayton, a white hotel, so she can buy an iced tea. Irene is about to pass out. If you don't see her, you might think Irene is white, even though she is black and lives in a black neighborhood. The man drops Irene off at the hotel after she says yes. Someone walks into the bar at the hotel and sits down with a drink. Irene is drinking iced tea. Irene stands nearby and looks at the pretty woman who seems to be white. There is a woman sitting at a table next to Irene's. The man goes, but the woman stays there and stares at Irene. Irene is afraid the woman will find out she is black. But after a short time, the woman comes over to Irene, and Irene recognizes her as Claire Kendry, a childhood friend who moved away from their Chicago neighborhood after her father died. Claire was the subject of many stories that she had become part of white society and was living as a white woman during Irene's teen years. Irene talks to Claire about her life. Irene learns that Claire is married to a white guy and that he doesn't know she is black. Claire tells Irene that she has to stop by before she goes back to New York when Irene gets up to leave. Irene reluctantly goes to Claire's house for tea the following Tuesday. When Irene gets to Claire's house, she finds that she is not the only person there. Gertrude, who she knows from childhood, is also there. Like Claire, Gertrude married a white man, but her husband knows she is black, while Claire's husband doesn't. The women talk about race and skin color in a hurtful way, which makes Irene, who is married to a black man and lives in a black neighborhood, angry and upset. John, Claire's husband, finally comes home. John starts using racial slurs and making racist comments right away, even though he doesn't know any of the women are black, including his own wife. Irene is mad, but she can't stop laughing at how funny things are. While still being nice, Irene leaves as soon as she can. After the visit, Claire sends Irene a letter thanking her, but Irene is so angry that she doesn't answer. It jumps ahead again to the beginning of the story, when Irene is reading the second letter Claire sent her, which is from two years ago. Irene hasn't seen Claire in a while because her marriage to Brian has become tense and distant. Brian is angry that Irene won't move to South America with him. Irene decides not to answer the letter because she doesn't want to see Claire again after the last time they met. But Claire goes to New York to see Irene and asks her why she didn't answer her letter. Irene tells Claire that she and Brian have chosen not to hang out with Claire because John would find out and put them all in danger. Claire cries and begs to be let into the dance that Irene is helping to host for the Negro Welfare League. She talks about how hard it is to deal with John's racism every day. Irene finally gives in and lets Claire come. Irene is annoyed by Claire, jealous of her, and impressed by her. She thinks Claire is greedy and beautiful at the same time. Irene and her friend Hugh Wentworth talk about passing, race, and beauty at the dance. With her charm and good looks, Claire makes friends with Irene's friends. Brian, who didn't want Irene to hang out with Claire, starts to like her. After the dance, Claire becomes friends with Irene and lives with the Redfield family. Even though she is now friends with Claire, Irene still has mixed feelings about her. She is attracted to her, jealous of her, and angry at her. Irene's marriage to Brian gets worse and worse at the same time. They fight about how to best raise their two boys, Ted and Junior, and Brian's need to be free. Irene starts to feel worried and sad. Friendship events are often attended by Claire, Irene, and Brian together. When Irene is sick, Claire and Brian go alone. Irene is having a tea party for Hugh one day. Brain wakes her up and tells her it's time to get ready for the party while she is sleeping. 
Brian lets Irene know that Claire is already downstairs. Irene doesn't understand why she didn't ask Claire. Brian finally says, sorry, that he did invite her. Irene suddenly thinks that Brian and Claire might be having an affair. Over the next few weeks and during the tea party, Irene's suspicions grow until she is sure that Brian is cheating on her. Irene is still eager to keep her marriage together. Irene dreams about getting rid of Claire. She thinks about what would happen if Claire's daughter Marjorie died or if John learned that she has black blood. Irene makes the choice that Claire and John can't get a divorce because if they do, Claire will be free to go after Brian. Irene tries to remind Claire of her duties to her daughter every time she says she wants to be free from John and live in the black community again. Irene meets John on the street one day while she is out with her friend Felice in the afternoon. John recognizes Irene from the time they met in Chicago and says hello. But when he sees Felice, he knows they are both black. Irene acts like she doesn't know John because she knows this could be dangerous for Claire. Afterward, Irene realizes that John might start to doubt Claire now that he knows she is black. For some reason, Irene doesn't tell Claire or Brian about the meeting, even though she feels like she should. Brain, Claire, and Irene go to a party at Felice and Dave Freeland's apartment on the sixth floor. While at the party, Irene is sad and grumpy. She opens a window to let fresh air in. When Felice opens the door to answer it, John rushes in and demands to know where Claire is. Claire moves away from him and toward the window. The room is tense after John yells racial slurs. When Irene is scared, she runs up to Claire and touches her on the arm. When Irene wakes up, Claire has already fallen out of the open window. She doesn't know what happened next. While everyone else runs downstairs to find out what happened, Irene stays upstairs for a little while longer because she is still. She finally goes downstairs and finds out that Claire has died. She starts to cry and then passes out. It is never made clear whether Irene pushed Claire out the window, Claire killed herself, or she just fell. About the author. Nella Larson was born Nellie Walker on April 13, 1891, in the Levee, a poor area of South Chicago. Later, Nella's mother married Peter Larson, who was also from Denmark. As a child and young adult, Nella Larson lived in Denmark for a few years. She later moved back to the United States. After moving to Harlem in the 1920s, Larson got a job as a librarian. Her first book, Quicksand, came out in 1928 and marked the beginning of her writing career. A few more books, including Passing, were written by Larson, but he didn't write anything else after 1930. In 1964, she died in New York City. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.